the art of getting better and stronger, progressive overload. So before we dive into progressive overload, we actually want to identify why there is, uh, this is important and who is it actually for. So if you're an athlete that, that is looking to get better at your sport, whether that's weightlifting, cycling, running, whatever it might be, Progressive overload is going to be one of the key components of your training program if you're actually looking to become a better athlete. And it's usually associated with uh, lifting weights, bodybuilding, but uh, it can be just as effective for uh, the sports that I just mentioned. And there are many different ways of achieving progressive overload, but the easiest way to think about it is just that you want to expose yourself to new levels of stress. So. What that means is basically if you can handle a certain volume right now, you want to gradually expose yourself to higher levels of stress because that is going to force you to get uh, better and stronger. And this is the most important component when it comes to building muscle and actually getting better. So when we're looking at how we can actually achieve progressive overload, I'm going to use a very straightforward example of uh, Ben from right here doing push-ups and uh, as you guys can see Ben is crying right now and sweating and uh, that is not that is not that uncommon when we're really pushing ourselves <laughs> when we're doing push-ups so uh, week one Ben performs three uh, sets of 10 repetitions so what that means that in total Ben did 30 push-ups and when we're looking at uh, week two right here, I've listed four dif different options how Ben can achieve progressive overload. And these are slightly different when it comes to the total volume, but what they all have in common is that they achieved progressive overload when we're comparing it to week one. So in the first example right here, Ben performed an extra set of 10 push-ups. So he increased his last week's push-ups from 30 to 40. And in this example, he did the same amount of sets, which was free, but he added an extra repetition to every single set. So he essentially did 33 push-ups instead of 30. He achieved progressive overload. And in this example, he performed uh, the same amount of sets, the same amount of repetitions, but he added a 10 kilo plate to his back, uh, 10 pounds, sorry. So that's about uh, five kilo plate. And it doesn't have to be a plate or anything like that. You could use a dumbbell or your partner could sit on you, whatever it might be, but just adding extra weight. So same repetitions, add a little bit of extra weight, progressive overload. And for example, if this was a squat instead of a bench press, uh, instead of a push up, the same thing could be applied, but instead of adding uh, a 10 kilo plate, we could add uh, 10 kilos as um, as a dumbbell we're holding in our hands or if we're doing barbell back squats we could just slap another 10 pounds onto the barbell so comes in many different forms and the final one is simply going to be reduced rest time so let's say that in between these sets Ben allowed himself to rest for one minute but if in week two he reduced that one minute of rest into 50 seconds he would rest 10 seconds less between each single set and that would also create progressive overload. So it's quite straightforward and uh, the only thing that we have to really do if this is important to you is to make sure that your training program makes it very easy to actually achieve progressive overload. And as you guys can see, there's so many different ways and uh, and the uh, application forms you can do to this and I touched a little bit in it on my on my video that's called training periodization so if you guys want to learn more about how to actually structure a training program around progressive overload that would be a great video to check out but one thing that we have to consider is there are a few cons with progressive overload or rather things that we have to keep in mind or things ca that can go wrong so for example, one error that I did when I was squatting and I was really focused on achieving progressive overload was that I kept adding more weight to the bar. I kept getting stronger. I kept getting better, but I did one crucial mistake. I lost my range of motion. And that is really terrible because 
well in the beginning I was squatting all the way down but as I was putting on to more weight I wasn't squatting all the way down anymore so I wasn't really performing the exercise properly and that is a terrible thing because I was under the illusion that I was making progress but in reality I was just shortening the movement and that is a very bad way to go and that's where a lot of people go wrong with progressive overload and this is very likely to lead to injuries and um, actually damaging ourselves in the long run so this is definitely something that we want to avoid and the other thing that we have to consider is that we actually have to allow ourselves to recover and when someone is, try is struggling to get better or putting on muscle there's usually two issues that is occurring so either they're missing progressive overload or they're not getting adequate recovery so what I recommend is that we have these different weeks so let's say that week one is our starting week week two is the following week we're going to increase the volume a little bit week three we're going to increase it a little more week four volume is the absolute highest so this is the most difficult week but then when we get back to week five that week is going to be slightly easier than week four we're intentionally going to lower the volume and intensity so we can actually recover and reap the rewards from all the training we've done in the previous weeks so that is a very easy way to do it is that you push yourself harder you push yourself harder you push yourself harder and then you recover and that is very important because a lot of people actually miss that step so i want to make sure that you guys don't forget about that so we want to push ourselves we want to push ourselves we want to push ourselves and then we want to recover and uh, typically i have three weeks of pushing followed by a recovery week and that is uh, going to be dependent on your training experience what's your recovery like so let's say that you're in a calorie surplus you're getting extremely good rest maybe you can push yourself for five or even six weeks before you actually have to take a recovery week but the important part is that they actually do take them because that's actually when we reap the rewards from our training because we break our body down then we build it back up so it doesn't matter if you're going to the gym if you're swimming whatever it is you want to ensure that you're progressively over overloading yourself getting adequate rest and starting all over and that is how we get progressively better and better and how you build more muscle so hope you guys enjoyed this video and take care